Okay, so welcome everybody. Wow, it's a nice big group. My name is Beth, in case you didn't know. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself so that you know where I'm coming from, so that you have an idea. So I'm actually a pharmacist. I grew up doing yoga in my grand's classes as a child. She taught yoga till she was well into her 80s. And so I, my first experience was doing yoga in her classes as a child, which was really amazing. And then I was sort of in and out of it growing up in my teenage years and having children. And five years ago, I decided that I needed to break away from pharmacy. It just wasn't as rewarding as it had been in the past and I wanted to do something different. So I decided to quit pharmacy, which I have done. I did my 200 hour teacher training at a place called Yo Yoga. And then I did my 300 hour advanced teacher training with Catherine. And I've also done, done the yin teacher training with Carla, who's also part of the Wellness Connection. And if you haven't met her on your course, you will. So that's a little bit about myself. And this morning's session is to give you an idea of what it would be like to go and teach vinyasa classes at a studio, anywhere in Cape Town or actually wherever you would like. So it's, it's, basically going to be an opportunity for you to learn a little bit about where vinyasa comes from what it means what it means to teach a vinyasa class compared to hot 26 or anything else i'm also going to bring in some information about power yoga it'll be a chance for you to pick my brains and ask me anything that you like i'm open to any questions anything that you want to know i will try and give you a little bit of maybe life experiences of what it what it's like to teach and if you have any questions, <clears throat> excuse me, please feel free to just stop me at any time and ask me anything that you'd like to know. Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm just going to, we're going to spend about half an hour first just talking a little bit about the history of vinyasa yoga. And I've got a PowerPoint which we'll look at. And then once you've done that half an hour, we'll do an hour of an actual class like you would teach or like you would experience at a, uh, a studio. It's a class that I've taught at the studios before, so it is something that I would, I would teach, just to give you an experience and uh, so you know what it's like. And then we'll have another little chat and then you can ask me any questions. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna get my PowerPoint started and then we'll, we'll get going. Um, sorry, hold on a second, I've got to remember how to do this now. Uh, oh, hang on, should I have to admit somebody else? Okay, I'm trying to find how to go to screen sharing now. Oh dear. Uh, I have to remember how to do this now. Oh <laughs> dear. Does anybody know how to go to screen sharing on Zoom? Um, yeah. Go at the bottom um, on the taskbar, it says screen share. I can't, which, what was it under? Press, press your name and you'll see the, the, the bar come up. At the bottom and it says share a little blue box or a little green box that's funny i don't have that i've got participants oh share screen i have got it i beg your pardon and Maybe then that. and then it shows you what you can share if you've got your powerpoint up there then press on that and press and then say okay. share screen share okay let's see hopefully that works yeah. let's go out of here okay can you see that yep okay thank you you can see I'm more yoga orientated than rather than technologically advanced. Okay, let's just start the bottom bottom right um, little little um, uh, little presentation screen thing will make it full. Okay, there we go. Got it. Can you see that, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, so Vanessa Yoga comes from the Sanskrit words. Two words. Nyasa, which means to place, and V, which means in a special way. See, sorry. Okay. So in the early 1990s, there was an ancient text. You can just read this. I'm just going to run through it very briefly. It was called the Yoga Kuranta, and it was passed down to a person called Krishna Macharya. And this text outlined a sequence of yoga poses suggesting a way to link mudras and breathing and bandhas and meditation and asanas together into a kind of a sequence or a flow. 
this knowledge was shared with Patabi Joyce. And I don't know if any of you know Patabi Joyce, but he still started the Ashtanga Mai store yoga in the 20th century. Okay, and then from this, this general basic outline of flowing sequence developed a form of yoga, which eventually became our vinyasa yoga. So vinyasa is essentially a sequence of progressive asanas. And the idea in a vinyasa class is to move in a intelligent way and to form a sequence that starts off with easier poses, warming up the body slowly and then progresses to more difficult poses and maybe to a, a peak posture. So the basis of vinyasa yoga is ashtanga yoga. Does any, do any of you know ashtanga yoga? Have any of you um, practiced ashtanga yoga? Yes, a few of you. Okay. All right. Okay. So you'll know a little bit about ashtanga. Ashtanga is the basis of vinyasa. All our vinyasa classes relatively come from the ashtanga flow. So the common example of a vinyasa is a best example is a sun salutation A and a sun salutation B. And I'm sure you guys have probably practiced that or started that a little bit with Catherine already. The idea is in your sun A and your sun B, if you have done them, you'll notice that you move one breath, one movement. Okay, so that is basically what vinyasa entails. So it's not static. You're not holding the pose. You can hold some of them, but most of the time it's vinyasa flow, which means you're flowing from one pose to the other and you're not static. So you're not holding the poses for a an, 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 an lengthened amount of time. Okay, so and also just remember when you're practicing or you're teaching a vinyasa class, expansive actions. So for example, when you are stretching or reaching up are initiated with an inhalation. So when you stretch and then expanding into the lungs, you want to be taking a breath in. And then when you are contracting or squeezing in like knee to nose, then that is on an exhalation. And it's important when you're teaching vinyasa to get that right. It's very frustrating when, when a teacher teaches that incorrectly. You have to have the inhalations on an expansion and you have to have exhalations on a, on a contraction. And you'll see when I teach the class that we cue the breathing all the time so that, that, that you can get that into your practice. So Ashtanga is a, prim a primary series, a secondary sequence, and there's about five or six advanced um, sequences. And you can see that the Ashtanga practice or Ashtanga sequence is very, very long and very involved. Most people spend their whole lives just on the primary sequence. It takes a long time to master. And the reason for this is if you're practicing typical Ashtanga, you are not allowed to move on to another pose until you have mastered the previous pose. So it's actually quite strict. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about a lead cloth. I'm talking about the typical true Ashtangis who practice a kind of a Mysore um, Ashtanga practice with a person in the, in the class that helps them and guides them and adjusts them. So in Ashtanga, it's very stringent. You are not allowed to move on to another pose unless you have mastered the previous pose. Okay. The difference between Ashtanga and Vinyasa is that that doesn't happen. Okay, in a vinyasa class, you do not have to have mastered any pose. I mean, a beginner can come and join a vinyasa class. You do not have to stay stuck maybe on sun A and sun B for months and months and months before your Mysore teacher gives you permission to move on to something else. Okay, so a quick look at the differences between Ashtanga and vinyasa. <clears throat> Ashtanga is, as I've said, three series, primary, secondary, and advanced. Vinyasa is a different sequence each time. Each time you go to a vinyasa class, depending on what the teacher is teaching, it will be a different sequence and you'll move through a whole range of different movements. In Ashtanga, each pose is held for five breaths. So you'll get into something like triangle, you'll hold the triangle pose for five breaths, you'll move through a little vinyasa through the center, change sides and hold on the left-hand side for five breaths. In vinyasa, it's much more dynamic. It's much more moving practice. So it's one breath, one movement. As I've said, in Ashtanga, a practitioner is not allowed to move on until the, until the sequence or the pose has been mastered. And in vinyasa, it's not like that at all. A beginner can join, and I'm not, most certainly not going to tell them that they're not allowed to do something. They, you, they join and they do what they can, and, it's, and if they can't do something, then they obviously just take a break or watch or do what they can. Ashtanga, there is no peak pose. And sometimes the goal of a vinyasa class is a peak pose. Okay, that's another difference between the two things. Okay. 
you might hear Anna Vanessa class a teacher talking about a um, she'll say something like take your Vanessa back to downward facing dog okay so a Vanessa is typically a three posed transition so your Vanessa means your high plank to low plank which is your chaturanga your upward facing dog and then your downward facing dog so those three poses put together are essentially what we would call a vinyasa okay because it's one breath one movement so when the teacher says take your vinyasa back to downward facing dog in a, in a vinyasa class that is essentially what she means in ashtanga a vinyasa is performed between each pose between each side so you do a lot of those chaturanga upward facing dog and downward facing dog in a vinyasa class, you have a pose or a sequence performed on one side. So say we start with the right leg first, and then we do the same thing on the other side, starting with the left leg. Okay. You have different types of vinyasa around the world. Okay, these are all brand named vinyasa. So you have Jiva Mukti, Core Power, Baptista Power Vinyasa, and Modo Yoga. So if I had to go anywhere in the world and I wanted to practice a Jiva Mukti class, because it's a franchise kind of thing and because it's the same throughout the whole world, I would know what I was getting. If I went to a Jiva Mukti class, I would know what I was getting if I go to a Baptista Power Vinyasa class. So those are all brand names of different types of vinyasa that you might encounter in different places in the world. <clears throat> okay, Jiva Mukti is fast paced. It's uh, each class has a theme. There's a lot of scripture, chanting, breathing, music. The Jiva Mukti yogis have a strict interpretation of the yama. I'm sure you've learned about the yamas. If you haven't, you will. Ahimsa, which means non-violent. So they typically advocate a vegan diet. So they will really encourage you to stay away from eating meat. Jiva Mukti, excuse me, Jiva Mukti Vinyasa is one of the vinyasa styles that a lot of the um, actors like uh, Sting and Madonna and all those actors overseas or, or um, famous people overseas tend to tend to uh, graduate towards or gravitate towards should I say okay core power obviously these classes offer a full body workout with a focus on core their level one classes are unheated and their level two and three are heated so this is just a general idea guys of the kind of vinyasa stuff that is out there I'm not going to worry too much about motor yoga and we're going to talk about power yoga. Okay, so vinyasa class is typically unheated. Power yoga is typically more a heated class. It's much faster, it's energetic, and you move a lot quicker from one pose to the next. It is said to be more of a workout because it is done in a room that is heated to 34 to 36 degrees. In winter, we heat the room a little bit more, actually. We heat it to about 37 degrees. Just give me a second here. Okay, Michelle's okay. All right, sorry, I missed that chat. Okay, all right, so that's your power yoga. It was developed by a guy called Larry Schultz, and this is interesting because Larry studied Ashtanga yoga under Patabi Joyce. Okay, and he got a little bit annoyed with the fact that nobody could practice and move and do their own thing. You had to wait until you had mastered, as I have mentioned before, that pose or that sequence before you could move on. So he decided that he was going to break away from Ashtanga and he was going to develop his own kind of yoga called rocket yoga. He took the poses from the three Ashtanga series and sequenced different sequences around them based more on the joints. This did not sit well with the Ashtangis, as you can imagine, because anybody was allowed to come to Larry Schultz's power yoga class or rocket yoga class. And you did not have to master a previous pose before you moved on to the next. So you can imagine that the Ashtangis were quite annoyed with him because he broke away from that tradition of that muscle yoga in a, in, in a huge way. Okay. This is an example of a rocket yoga sequence. Have a look carefully and see how advanced it actually is. Because three quarters of the way into your sequence, you're in things like side crow, pause with a kasana, you're in Mayurasana peacock pose. And it's quite, it's quite a, to me, if I had to try and practice this, it would be extremely difficult. So I think that his sequences were quite difficult, but that didn't deter people from coming and practicing his rocket yoga. It just gave them a chance to break away from Ashtanga. And apparently he, his, his franchise did really, really well. Oh, sorry, let me just... Okay, and then there were another few people who developed power yoga. Uh, there was a guy called Bri 
sorry, just excuse me, guys, just one second. Somebody's ringing my doorbell. Just give me a second. Sorry, that's some person incessantly ringing my bell outside. Okay, so Beryl um, Brian Kist and Beryl Bend Bender Birch, and they also developed their own style of um, power yoga. Okay, so power yoga is a huge thing around the world. We teach power yoga classes all the time, and people absolutely, absolutely love them. Okay. Another person I'd like to mention is Baron Baptista, and he is a very, very famous power yoga teacher. If any of you have never watched a video of Baron Baptista teaching, I really encourage you to go and just have a look. He's amazing. He's got a very calm, soothing kind of voice, and he's just... I would love to do one of his classes. He just seems to have a very nice aura. And his parents were both yoga teachers and they opened one of the first yoga schools in San Francisco in 1952. His power yoga is branded, it's called BPV, which stands for Baptista Power Vinyasa. So you would know that if you went to a yoga studio that was advertising BPV, you would, you, you would be doing a Baptista Power Vinyasa sequence. Okay, he's amazing. Go, if you can, go and try and watch a video of him teaching. He's a very, very calm, soothing voice, and he, and he makes you work hard without you even realizing it. His classes are always heated to 36, 32 to 36 degrees. This is an example of one of his power flows. He always starts off with sun A's and sun B's, and then develops or, or gravitates from there into all sorts of different movements. Um, it's quite a long sequence, so this sequence would probably take you about an hour and a half to practice. And it basically covers everything. There's forwards, folds, there's twists, there's standing balances, a lot of the standing balances. There's eagle, there's aeroplane, there's dancer's pose. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, arm balances, crow poses in there. Um, you do a lot of back bending towards the end, so it's quite a well-rounded, well-developed um, sequence. So how do different studios present power yoga? Okay, basically all very similar. It's fast paced, it's constant movement, and it's vinyasa based. It's heated, and some of the studios offer a very core based kind of power yoga. In other words, you will be on the floor for 15 minutes or, or 10 minutes just doing core based stuff, which isn't really, not so much yoga, might not be yoga based, it might be something like sit-ups, it might be little bicycle, um, <clears throat> Uh, what do you call those bicycle lying down bicycling through the legs and that kind of stuff so a lot of a lot of the studios add a, a lot of core based stuff into the power yoga to make it a little bit stronger and to differentiate it from your normal vinyasa classes okay we're just going to talk about a peak pose i'm sure you guys know what a peak pose is because Catherine likes to sequence to a peak pose and that is the most challenging posture in a sequence and obviously you want to prepare, if you're teaching to a peak pose, you want to prepare the body correctly. So your peak pose, you want to try and warm up to that peak pose slowly and do movements that may mimic that peak pose before you get into the peak pose. Okay, and you always finish off with a, a cool down after the peak pose. But I must just tell you that not all vinyasa classes are structured to a peak pose. <clears throat> Sometimes it's just about moving and breathing. And the peak pose is not really anything that you're working towards. In power yoga classes, the peak poses are often just thrown in. So you'll be in malasana squat and then someone will say, the teacher will say, if you want to move into a crow pose, then those who want to take the crow pose can do crow and those that don't can just stay in malasana squat. So we don't stop to break down peak poses in a power vinyasa class. It's too quick, guys. You don't have time. People just want to move, they want to breathe, they want to do a couple of twists, they want to move in a way that exposes them to a whole lot of different movements. And the peak poses are just added as an option for people that can do them. The advanced practitioners will do the peak poses and the people that can't do the peak poses will just stay wherever they are in a previous pose or wherever they need to be. Okay, vinyasa classes are a little bit slower. And as I said, you can teach to a peak pose, which is um, nice <clears throat> to do. You just have to 
be mindful that if you are teaching to a peak pose, you are going to stop the flow a little bit because you're going to have to stop and maybe demonstrate and break it down. So just remember that if you are teaching to a peak pose, you might have to just break the flow of your class a little bit. Whereas in a power vinyasa class, you just keep moving and the peak poses are, are added as an option. And those who can do them, do them. And those who can't, don't. Okay. I've already mentioned that there are peak poses in vinyasa classes, not all the time. Okay. Just sometimes. All right. Um, yeah, I told you that peak poses are woven into the flow. The handstands may be included. Warrior flows are very much part of the sequence in a power vinyasa class. And the power vinyasa classes are very fast and flowy. Common peak poses that you see in, in um, vinyasa and power classes, uh, crow, side crow. This might be good to just take a picture of this, guys, if you want to, so that you have an idea of, of what is offered. Eight angle balance, handstands, pincher, headstand. Any of these might be, look, I would not throw Titi Basana in <laughs> as an option. I would probably teach something like Titi Basana, which is your five, firefly pose because that's difficult but the others are often just added as an option and if you want to do them you can do them and if you don't want to then you just stay in the previous pose or wherever you want okay some more is spits birds of paradise warrior three compass pose side plank dancers pose standing hand to big toe pose these are just a few more so you have quite a few options it's quite nice to teach something like dancers pose because a lot of people can do it um so that's that's quite a quite a nice one to to sequence towards something like dancers pose because as I said a lot of people can do it so it's quite nice. Uh, your back bends, your camel pose, your floor bow, your full wheel. Those can also be peak poses that are either maybe broken down in a vinyasa class or just added in as an option in a power class. Okay. We're going to be moving through some transitions um, in a moment when we do our um, class. So I'm not going to worry about that next section at the moment, but we are going to be looking at a couple of transitions. But when we move into this um, class up here that I'm going to be teaching you in a few moments, we're going to be moving through some transitions. So you will see that transitions are also very important in a vinyasa class. It's also a nice way of getting people to change from facing one side of the mat, so facing the front of your mat, to turn around and face the opposite, face the back side of your mat, and just have a sort of a mandala flow where you, where you move around your mat, so you're not always facing the front. That's another thing that's often brought into vinyasa classes is that you change the direction on your mat. Okay, um, just want to have a look at something quickly here, guys. Sorry, just give me a second. Uh, sorry, just give me a second here. Gosh, how do you get out of here? Give me a sec here, guys. I just want to see something quickly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any questions about anything that we have moved through? yet or anything that you want to ask me or anything that you want to say I, I want to ask you guys how many of you have sorry let me just oh my goodness sorry just let me get out of here how many of you practice vinyasa classes and how many of you practice them quite regularly anybody yes okay okay and how many of you practice power vinyasa classes Anybody? I can't see. I'm trying to move through your videos. No, no. Natalie, okay. Okay. Other people, no. Okay. All right. Gary, no. Okay. Okay. All right. Any questions so far, guys? I know we're running through this quite quickly, but two hours is not a lot of time. And we've got to get through what we need to get through. So basically, think about vinyasa as one breath, one movement, a lot of transitions. Um, moving in a way that 
maybe progressing to a peak pose, but not necessarily all the time. The difference between vinyasa and power vinyasa is that power vinyasa is a lot faster. It's heated. You don't often, you don't teach to a peak pose. The peak poses are just added in as an option. So those who want to take the peak pose, take the peak pose, and those who don't want to or who can't, don't. Okay, so beginners will just make do with whatever they can because beginners also arrive um, to, to power yoga classes. Is that good for cardio? For a power class? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, when will power vinyasa be contraindicated? Has blood pressure issues with the temperature and speed put them at risk? I would say definitely yes. There are a lot of people who don't enjoy the heat. Let's be honest. Not everybody likes to be in a 37 degree heat and moving. Blood pressure issues, yes. Uh, maybe you'd have an issue with high blood pressure, but you would also have an issue if you have very low blood pressure. Okay. Temperature could put, you, could put you at risk if you haven't hydrated properly throughout the day before you practice. But it also is very much a, a personal thing. You also have women who are going through menopause. who most certainly do not want to come and practice a hot power class. Okay, let's be honest. They're not going to enjoy that at all. So if it is something you enjoy, that's great. I wouldn't say that it's completely contraindicated, but you would have to feel it out in your own body. And if it's not something you enjoy, if you feel lightheaded because your blood pressure is too low, um, if your high blood pressure is not controlled, because there's a difference between controlled hypertension and uncontrolled hypertension, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're power, if your blood pressure is not controlled, you might not feel comfortable practicing a heated vinyasa power class. Is power yoga equivalent to going for a run? No, not at all. Don't think that you work up or work off as many calories or anything like that as you do in a power yoga class. It's not quite the same as going for a run. Your, your cardiovascular uh, part of the class is not that mm, hectic, let me put it that way. So you will be getting a workout, but you're not gonna, you still want to have that yoga experience. You still wanna be able to maintain your breath because at the end of the day, the breath is the most important part of our yoga practice. Let's not forget about that. Okay, the physical part of the practice and the asanas is, 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 is great. But at the end of the day, it's that, it's that connection to your breath and that switching off and allowing your mind to just be quiet and for that hour so that you can just move and breathe on your mat in a way that feels good. So it's not about getting your heart rate up to such an extent that you can't breathe properly. Okay, child's pose is always offered as an option to people if they're in a, power, in a vinyasa class or a power vinyasa class to take child's pose whenever they need because it's no good if you are out of breath. So even though you're doing a power yoga class, you still want to keep that connection to your breath and that's important. You as a teacher will have to moderate your class so that you don't take people into a space where they actually cannot breathe and they cannot continue the class. You will know if you have pushed them too hard, if you have half of your class in child's pose after five minutes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Cause that's not where you want them to be. Okay. So you need to moderate your class. You need to know, think about, okay, we've done quite a bit of work here. We've done quite a bit of movement. I'm going to put a child's pose. You can also tell people to go into child's pose. I'm going to put in a child's pose here because I want everybody to just allow that movement to consolidate or whatever. And I want to give everybody a chance to catch their breath. Maybe after you've thrown in crow pose as a peak pose, as an option, you can then tell people once they go back to their down dog to have a rest in child's pose. So you don't get to that stage in a power yoga class where you are completely out of breath and all you want to do is lie on the floor in a heap. That is not the point. It's still yoga, guys. Okay. So it's up to you, even though you're teaching a power class, to moderate that class, to keep it a nice consistent pace so that the people can actually practice. It's no point in having everybody in child's pose. That really is, there's no point in that. So even though it is a little bit, it's faster, it's more dynamic, it's heated, all those things. And there will be people who battle, obviously, people who are unfit or people who are new to yoga. It's up to you as a teacher to try and moderate and regulate that class so that you have people who are still practicing yoga. Okay, because at the end of the day, it's not a, uh, something that you would want to go and do at the gym. Okay, you still want to have that connection to your breath. You still want to have that ujjayi pranayama. You still want to bring elements of that stuff into your class so that it is yoga. Otherwise, they may as well be at the gym doing a, a head class. Does that make sense, guys? Sorry, let me just admit uh, Bev here again. Okay. All right. 
So yes, it's fast paced. Yes, it's dynamic, but it's still yoga. And let's not forget that. That's the whole point is that you don't want it to be something that, that they feel out of control or out of breath. You still, and, also, and also what's important is that you, it is dynamic. You do move a bit faster, but you've also got to remember that if you move too fast, you have a chance of injuring your students. So you really need to moderate the pace so that you're moving dynamically, you're moving a little bit quicker, but you're not moving so fast that number one, they can't get into the poses properly, or number two, that there's a chance of injuring themselves. And the thing with power yoga, it did get a very, very bad reputation for a very long time because the movements were extremely fast and people were getting injured. Over the years, um, everybody has realized that in actual fact, to move at a hectic pace is actually not so clever. And even though the power classes are strong, a lot of the teachers are now slowing them down just a little bit so that you can get into the poses properly and you have less chance of injuring yourself. Because the last thing that you want to do is cause injuries to your students as well. Okay, so there's a lot to think about. Don't forget when you're teaching vinyasa or power vinyasa, you're managing your students, you're watching your class, you're managing the heat, you're also playing music. So you're managing a whole lot of stuff. So it's quite, it can be a little bit tricky. It takes a little bit of practice to get all those elements working correctly together. But when you can do that, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's very, very, very rewarding to teach vinyasa or power vinyasa. Okay. A lot of people only move, maybe, maybe, for that one or two hours during their whole week. Think about how many people sit at their desks all day. A lot of people, just because we are so movement orientated and we probably move maybe more than other people, you get people that sit for hours and hours and hours on end and they might only come and move in your class for that hour. So you want them to have the best experience that you can offer them. You want them to be able to switch their minds off, get a good uh, movement, do a little bit of twisting, a little bit of backbending, get them into some kind of a flow so that they can just switch off and just get them to move and it might be the only hour that they move out of the whole week so you need to take that into consideration and just moderate your classes so that you have less chance of injuring your students and the same for beginners because beginners obviously have more chance of being injured okay so when i say that it's fast i don't mean that you actually just throw yourself completely out of control you still have to moderate and regulate your class and keep it a nice tempered pace so that people can stay moving uh, in a safe way okay all right, okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna practice a vinyasa class. Okay, so set your mats up and we all will get going. Hopefully you guys didn't have a huge breakfast because if you did, it might be a little bit uncomfortable, but let's see how we go. <coughs> okay, I just wanna get rid of my chat here. Okay, so the, um, as I said, this is typically a vinyasa class. I've taught this class at some of the studios. It is, uh, if you had to put up a class at a studio, this is the kind of class that you would end up doing. Okay. Let me give you a bit of time just to get onto your mats, guys. If for any reason, you have injuries, then please just modify. Uh, you guys should know your bodies by now. So modify if you need to. Take child's pose when you need to. It's not a very, very hectic practice, but if you do need a break, then please take it, okay. All right. So we're gonna get started in a seat. Sitting towards the back of your mat. Just sitting in any cross-legged position that feels comfortable for you. So that might mean just crossing one shin out in front of the other. If you want to, you can stack your ankles in front of the other. Or if you have half lotus in your practice, then you can obviously take that as well. I'm just going to take a few moments here to find the into the spine. So sit up nice and tall and straight. Then relax your hands down on the thighs. And then uh, allow the eyes to close and allow the chin to tuck closer towards your chest. Start to shift your gaze and your energy and your focus inward and just start to become aware of moving the breath in and out of your nose in maybe a more fluid-like or liquid-like fashion. Perhaps even con creating that constriction down the back of the vocal cords so you add some texture to that breath and a little bit of sound to that breath.
always nice to start your practice with a clean slate. So as you focus on your breath, allow your mind to become still. Allow your thoughts to settle in the background. Start to let go of anything that you may have weighing on your mind, weighing on your shoulders. Right. And then as you inhale, lift your arms up alongside your ears. You can keep your eyes closed, lift your gaze, connect the palms of your hands. And then exhale, draw that prayer down to your heart space. And don't even it to your heart center. Roll your chin down towards your fingertips. Just soften into the back of the neck and relax your shoulders. Good. And then as you inhale, lift your arms up alongside your ears. And then as you exhale, roll into a tabletop. So crawl over your feet and land gently on all fours. And I'm going to change this up a little bit this morning. So now I want you to lower your forearms down to the floor. Check that your elbows are underneath your shoulders. Spread your fingers nice and wide. We'll move to a few rounds of cat and cow, but it's really more about getting into your shoulders here. So as you inhale, drop the belly down, pull your heart forward. And as you exhale, we round into a cat. Tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone, but really active in your shoulders here. Push into the floor, lift your head and your shoulders away from the mat. Inhale to your cow, belly down, pull your heart forward. Exhale, round your spine, tuck the chin, press into the mat. Again, inhale, belly down, heart and chest forward. Exhale, get into your shoulders, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone, head and shoulders lift away from the floor. Let's go for two more. Inhale. Smooth out your breath. Make it nice and long here. Exhale to that cat spine. Round through the upper back. Inhale to your cow. Pull your heart forward. Open your chest. Exhale. Round through the upper back. Into your shoulders. Good. Inhale to a relatively neutral spine now. We're coming into puppy pose. So as you exhale, walk your hands slightly further away from you. Ski slope your chest down to the floor. You can land your forehead to the floor. If you want more intense stretch into your shoulders, you can land your chin to the floor. Keep the arms straight if you can. If this is uncomfortable, take your arms out, your hands slightly wider to the edges of your mat. Keep your hips over your heels. And just allow a softening of the heart down towards the mat so that you can open up into the shoulders and at the same time, stretch the front of your body. Nice, guys. Yes. Beautiful. Breathe here as we open up into the shoulders. Keep the arms out in front of you. Good. Good. All right, lift your gaze as you inhale. And now slide your hands underneath your shoulders. Come into your neutral table as you exhale. Stack your joints here. Hands underneath the armpits and knees directly underneath your hips. Inhale to your traditional cow pose. Drop the belly down. Pull your heart forward. Exhale, round to the spine. Tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone into your angry cat pose. Inhale, belly down. Heart and chest forward. Shoulders away from ears. Exhale, round to the spine. Tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone. Active hands push into the mat. Two more. Inhale, find your cow pose. Belly down. Spread and open the front of your body. Good. Exhale to your cat. Round through the upper back. Feel it spreading around the back of the heart space. Beautiful, guys. So one more round. Inhale to your cow. Remember to keep that breath nice and fluid and smooth. And then exhale into your cat. Round through the upper back. Pull the belly back and close to the spine. Tuck the chin. Tuck the tailbone. Good. Find a neutral table as you inhale. Lift the back of your head up. Tuck your toes. And now hop your knees just a centimeter off the floor as you exhale. Really building up some heat in your arms here. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Lift the back of your head up. So don't hang the chest down. You want to feel like you're trying to contain the front of your heart. And then stay low to the mat here. As you switch on some heat in your legs. And keep high up on the necks of the toes so we can stretch into the feet. Good. Keep your knees hovering off the floor. Listen carefully. As you inhale, just shift your bum back towards your heels like a little crotch. 
And as you exhale, step your feet behind your hands to a forward fold, Uttanasana at the top of your mat. Bend the knees, allow the arms and the head to hang heavy. And you can stay there or you can take a ragdoll pose. So maybe you, maybe you hold opposite elbows and gently start to sway the body from side to side. Traction through the lower back, encouraging your elbows and the tips of your forearms closer down towards the floor. Maybe changing the weight distribution in your feet so that you can just get a little bit more subtle movement into the body. Good, come back to the middle now. Release the fingertips out onto the mat and find a halfway lift as you inhale. Hands on your shins, gaze forward, but tuck your chin. Forward fold as you exhale, bend your knees as much as you need to. Again, halfway lift, inhale, straighten your arm. Forward fold, exhale, soften the back of your leg. Halfway lift, inhale, gaze forward. Forward fold, exhale, and soften. Rise to high mountain. Take an inhale as you scoop your arms up alongside your ears. Connect the palms of your hands. And then draw that thing out to your heart space as you empty out your lungs. Step your feet together. Find equal standing. Move down firmly through both of your feet. And then switch your quads on. Pull the kneecaps up. Find more length through the spine. Draw the belly in and relax your shoulders. Take a high mountain. Inhale to flow your arms up alongside your ears. Forward fold, exhale, hinge to the floor, relax the back of your neck. Take a halfway lift as you inhale, gaze forward. Forward fold, exhale, and soften. Rise to high mountain, big breath in, scoop your arms up. And to create your heart, some of Siti He, exhale. High mountain, inhale, flow your arms up. Forward fold, exhale, bow to the floor. Halfway lift as you inhale, gaze forward. High plank this time, plant your palms, step your feet back. Really power up through the arms in your high plank. Take a dome into the upper back, round your shoulder blades up towards the ceiling. And now refine the shape a little bit more. So if you can hold this, hold it. If you need to drop to your knees, then drop to your knees. Stay active in your core, draw the belly in. And then switch your quads on again, pull the kneecaps up towards the hips. Stay high up on the toes. Now send your heels back slightly so that you can feel your quads switch on. Good. Keep breathing as you hold it nice and steady and strong. Good. As you inhale, drop your knees down to the floor. As you exhale, bend your elbows, soften your chest all the way down to the mat. When you get there, untuck your toes. Inhale to cobra, lift your chest off the floor, tuck your elbows in. Exhale, soften belly and chest down to the mat. Again, inhale, cobra, lift lightly up. Exhale, soften chest and belly back down. One more, inhale to your cobra, squeeze your elbows in. Exhale, soften and lower to the mat. Tuck your toes, push up to a high plank or a tabletop on your breath in. And find your first downward facing dog on your breath out. So send your sitting bones up towards the ceiling. And in your first downward facing dog, it should be like a good full body stretch. So it's nice to move a little bit here. Bend your knees one at a time, pedal out through the feet. Good. Maybe take a gentle shake of your head from side to side. Good. All right. And then hold your downward facing dog nice and steady, guys. And you want to have active hands here. Press into the mat with your hands and spread your fingers wide apart. Think about handstand hands. Michelle, shorten your downward facing dog a little bit. Michelle Potter, yup. Bend the knees, a oh yes, that looks better. A little bit, now send your sitting bones up towards the ceiling. Yes, yes, that looks much better. Beautiful guys, now breathe there, engage that Ujjayi Pranayama. Breathe gently in and out of your nose, good. All right, as you inhale, lift both of your heels up high, keep your legs straight. As you exhale, push the heels back down, downward facing dog. We're just warming up slowly. Good. Again, inhale to lift your heels up really high. Exhale, push your heels down to the floor. Again, inhale, lift your heels up high. Exhale, push heels down to the floor. Good. Hold nice and steady and strong there. Good. Lift your right leg up and back for a three-legged dog as you inhale. Bend the knee, flare, open your hip. Squeeze your heel towards your left glute. Keep your downward facing dog shape, guys. So square off your shoulders. Good. Roll your right shoulder back, your left shoulder forward. Nice. 
legs. Inhale to a three-legged dog. Straighten out the legs. Square off the hip. Pull knee to nose. Round to the spine as you exhale. Good. Three-legged dog. Inhale. Send the right leg up and back. Now step to a runner's lunge. Take your right foot outside your right hand. Tent your fingers as you inhale. Sink your hips. Look forward. Then it's a wide pyramid pose. As you exhale, slowly lift your hips up and back and straighten your legs. Inhale, ripple forward to your lunge. We bend the right knee. Exhale to your wide pyramid pose. One more. Inhale, rock forward into your runner's lunge. Exhale to your wide pyramid, lift the hip. Inhale to rock forward to your runner's lunge. Malasana squat. Exhale to step the left foot outside your left hand. Drop your bum, drop your hips. Bring your hands to create your heart. Push elbows into knees. Push knees back into elbows. If you squeeze the glutes, you can open up the hips a little bit more. Root the tailbone down. Lift your chest. Relax your shoulders. And then use your legs to stand. Inhale to rise to high mountain. Big scoop of your arms up. Hands to pray at your heart as you exhale. Step your feet together. Find some ascendancy. Good. High mountain. Inhale. Flow your arms up. Take a forward fold. Exhale. Bow to the mat. The halfway lift as you inhale. Gaze forward. High plank. Plant your palms. Step your feet back. Hold for your exhale. Drop your knees down to the floor as you inhale. Shift body weight forward. Exhale. Bend your elbows lower. Halfway up. Inhale to straighten your arms. We do two more like that. Exhale, bend your elbows, hover your chest. Inhale to straighten your arms. Exhale, bend your elbows like a little chaturanga. Inhale to straighten your arms. Now send your bum back towards your heels for a little tuck toe child's pose. Belly and chest to your thighs. Gaze forward, press off your toes. Spring forward to a high plank as you inhale, pause. Chaturanga, it's low plank or you can lower onto your tummy if you choose. Inhale to an upward facing dog. If you're on your tummy, do a cobra. And then tuck the chin down, facing dog, sitting bones up towards the sky, heavy heels to the mat. Good. Left leg up, three legged dog, breathe in. Bend the knee, flare open the hip, hold for the breath out. Push your right heel down towards the mat and don't twist into that leg. And then hoist the left knee up really high so you can get the stretching into your left hip. Three legged dog, straighten out the leg as you inhale. Knee to nose, round the spine, exhale. Good, three-legged dog, inhale, left leg up and back. Runners lunge, lift lightly outside your left hand. Tent your fingers as you inhale, sink your hips, gaze forward. Wide pyramid, slowly exhale, hips up and back. Inhale, ripple forward to your runners lunge. Exhale to your wide pyramid pose. Inhale, ripple forward to your runners lunge. Exhale to your wide pyramid, hips up. Inhale to your runner's lunge, look forward. Malasana squat, exhale, step right foot outside your right hand. Drop the bum, drop the hips, hands to break your palm. Rise to stand, inhale, press into the legs, scoop the arm up. Hands to break your heart, empty out your lungs, and now step your feet together. Good, let's find chair pose. Inhale to bend the knees and scoop the arms up alongside your ears. Exhale to sit a little bit deeper into your heels. Yeah, so stick your bum out like you're pretending to sit into an invisible chair behind you. Good. Keep breathing as you keep the hips nice and low. Good. Stick a little bit lower on your breath in. Can you pause there? Nice. Forward fold as you exhale, release into your legs. Good. Take a halfway lift as you inhale, gently gaze forward. High plank, plant your palms, step your feet back. Power up through the arms, draw the belly in, lift the back of your head up so you're not hanging in your shoulders. Good, inhale to shift your body weight slightly forward. Here we go, chaturanga, low plank, lower halfway down or choose to lower onto your tummy. Inhale to your upward facing dog or your cobra, strong arms in your up dog, guys, beautiful. Downward facing dog, ride the breath up and back, hips up towards the ceiling. Eyes, nice. relax the back of your neck. Good. And equal weight into both of your hands, equal weight into both of your feet. Take big nourishing breaths in and out of your nose. Good. Take a three legged dog, right leg up as you inhale. Knee to nose, round the spine, exhale. Three legged dog, right leg up and back, breathe in. Step to a low lunge, step forward between your hands lightly. 
power up your legs for high crescent lunge. Inhale to stand up. Hold for your exhale, so sit nice and low into the right leg. Draw the belly in, draw the ribs in. Stay high on the back toes. Good, inhale to gaze forward, lift your arms. To the right, it's a vertical twist. Exhale the right arm back, left arm reaches forward. Inhale to your high crescent lunge, gaze forward for your balance. Aeroplane, exhale to launch onto the right leg, lift the left leg up behind you. It's your first balance on one leg, so if it's not perfect, that's okay. Reach the fingertips behind you towards your right heel. Arms back, guys. Yes. Draw the belly in and up so you support your lower back. Keep a gaze, steady gaze with your eyes. And just breathe in and out of your nose. Good. Hold it strong, steady, a little bit longer. Nice. Good. And then it's a single leg to dust. And as you inhale, pull the knee up into your chest. Stand up nice and tall. And then step back to an arrow lunge as you exhale. As you step the left foot back, reach the arms behind you, but tilt your upper body. Sorry, your right foot back. Reach the arms behind you, but tilt your upper body forward about 45 degrees. Draw the belly in nice and steady, nice and strong. And keep that shape as you inhale, reach both of your arms forward in line with your ears. As you exhale, reach the arms back, back into your arrow lunge. Good. Again, inhale, reach both of your arms forward. Exhale, stretch both of your arms back. And one more. Inhale, both of your arms forward. Exhale, stretch both of your arms back. Good. Inhale to a high crescent lunge. Easy back bend. Look up at your hands, cactus your elbows down, lift your heart up towards the sky. Good. Inhale to a high crescent lunge. Listen carefully. Vertical twist to your left as you exhale. Stretch the arms out nice and wide. Okay, listen guys. Lower the back knee down towards the floor. <coughs> Excuse me. Turn your left toes to point out behind you. You're in a little kneeling gate pose. Bring your hands to create your heart facing the long edge of your mat. Okay? You may need to just have a look at the screen. Okay. And then as you inhale, lift your arms up alongside your ears. As you exhale, interlace the fingers and place your hand to the nape of your neck. Inhale to lift your chest and lengthen. Exhale, take a side bend over towards the right. So bring the right elbow down towards your right thigh. Inhale, come up through the center. We do that again. Exhale, side bend, right elbow down to right thigh. Inhale, come up through the center. Exhale, side bend, right elbow down towards your right thigh. Inhale to release the arms alongside your ears. To the back of your mat, when more hands to the floor, come up onto the right toes as you exhale. Lift the left leg up and back for a three-legged dog. Check that you have the left leg up, guys. Inhale. Good. Meet your nose. Round your spine. Exhale. Inhale to your three-legged dog. Lift your left leg up and back. Good. Knee to your left elbow or tricep. Take it out towards the side and hold. Yes. Round through the upper back. Pause. Good. Inhale to your three-legged dog. Left leg, send it up and back. Now twist underneath you and tap your right elbow. Hold there. Pause. Yes, it's a twist. Yes. To the right elbow. Yes, you've got it. Good. Three-legged dog. Inhale, send your left leg up and back. Now step forward to a low lunge at the top of your mat. Rise to a high crescent lunge as you inhale. Stand up really nice and tall. Warrior two, as you exhale, open up. You're bending into the back leg, into your left leg. Yup, beautiful. Check your alignment. Check that your left knee is over your left ankle. Check that your right toes point towards a long edge of your mat. Reach out through the arms. Relax your shoulders. So stay strong when you need to, but then soften into the face. Soften into the other side parts of the body that you don't need to stay active. All right, reverse your triangle on your inhale. Straighten the left leg as you lean backwards. Straighten your front leg. Yes, yes, you've got it. Extended side angle as you exhale. Rebend the left knee, left forearm onto thigh. Right arm reaches alongside your ear. So try and touch something on, on far to the back of your room. Good. Keep a generous bend in the left leg. Keep lifting your body away from that left thigh. So don't collapse down there. Peel the pinky finger of your right hand in towards your face and peel your chest up towards the sky. Good. Good. 
All right, reverse your warrior as you inhale. So keep the bend in your left leg, nothing changes. Extended side angle again as you exhale, forearm to thigh, find a little bit of a flow. Good. Now rise to a five pointed star as you inhale, come up through the center, heels and toes up. Horse pose as you exhale, bend your knees and sink nice and low. Five pointed star, inhale to right. Horse pose, exhale, keep your knees over your toes. Five pointed star, breathe in. Horse, sink a little bit lower on your breath out. Five pointed star, breathe in. To the front of your mat, warrior two, breathe out. So we're gonna hold this, we're on the other leg. So be nice and low to the right knee. Stretch out through the arms and the fingers. Beautiful guys, yep, straight, strong arms. Good, pull the mat apart with your feet, so keep your legs strong and active. <laughs> okay, reverse your warrior on your inhale, lean backwards. Take a low lunge to the front of the mat as you exhale, when will fingertips to the floor. Stand on your right leg, inhale the left leg up for standing splits. Shiva squat, exhale to tuck the left knee behind the right calf and gaze forward, bend your knee. Standing splits, inhale left leg up and back. Shiva squat, exhale gaze forward. Again, standing splits, inhale left leg up. Exhale to your Shiva squat, look forward. Standing splits, inhale left leg up. Forward fold, exhale two feet knee. Halfway lift, inhale, lengthen your spine. Forward fold, exhale and soften. Ride to high mountain on your inhale. Hands to point your heart. Stand the to he exhale. Bend your knees, find chair pulls, Utkatasana, big breath in. Eagle your right arm underneath your left, wrap your arms up nice and tight. You're going to find an eagle balance. So lift the right leg up, cross it over the left, come into your Garudasana. Lift your elbows up, relax your shoulders down. Soften into the face. Now get really active in your legs, squeeze your inner thighs together. <clears throat> Keep a steady gaze through your eyes and keep the breath moving smoothly in and out of your nose. Squeeze your inner thighs, drop your hips, sink a little bit more. Hold for three, for two, and for one. Beautiful, high mountain, inhale, expand, all of that compression. Forward fold, exhale, hinge, bow to the mat. Take a halfway lift as you inhale, gaze forward. Chaturanga, your flow, high plank to low plank. You can skip this out if you like. Inhale to your upward facing dog or your cobra. Tuck the chin, downward facing dog, sitting bones up toward the sky. Good, catch your breath here, take big breaths in and out of your nose. Sitting bones, lengthen up towards the ceiling so that you have a stretch into both sides of your waist. Good, send your left leg up and back, three-legged dog, breathe in. Knee to nose, round the spine, breathe out. Beautiful guys, three-legged dog, inhale, send the left leg up and back. Step forward to a low lunge between your hands and as lightly as you can. High crescent lunge, inhale, power up your legs, lift your arms up, stay for the breath out. Tuck the tailbone, draw the belly in. Have a little bend in the back knee. Good, inhale to lift your arms, soften your face. To the left at your vertical twist, exhale, left arm back, right arm forward. Yes, high crescent lunge. Inhale, gaze forward. Find your balance, get ready. Aeroplane, exhale to fly. Lean onto the left leg, lift the right leg up behind you. Reach your fingertips towards your back heel. Yes, you can have a little bend in the standing leg if you prefer. So just make it a bit more subtle if you need to. Good, lift your chest up away from the floor like an upward facing dog. Beautiful. Single leg to dasana as you inhale, stand up, pull your right knee up into your chest. Lengthen through both sides of your waist, flex the right foot. Now step back into your arrow lunge. Step the right foot back, arms behind you, tilt your upper body 45 degrees. Draw the belly in, your core is active here. Lean the body forward, guys. Your body's at 45 degrees. So fold, tilt over your right leg, arms reaching behind you. Yes, now as you inhale, reach both of your arms forward in line with your ears. Nothing else moves. Good, as you exhale, reach both of your arms back into your arrow. And again, inhale to reach your arms forward. Exhale, reach the arms back. So keep leaning forward, don't come into a high crescent lunge. Keep leaning forward, inhale to reach your arms forward, nothing else moves. Yes, Gary, arms forward and exhale to reach the arms behind you. Good, find a high crescent lunge as you inhale, stand up nice and tall. To the right, it's your vertical twist, right arm back, left arm forward. 
Okay, hold there. Drop the back knee down to the floor as you inhale. Get the right toes to point out behind you. Exhale, bring your hands to create your heart space. You're in your kneeling gate pose. Inhale to lift your arms up alongside your ear. Exhale, interlace the hands, place them to the base of the neck. Inhale, lift the chest and lengthen. To the left, we go side bend. Left elbow down to left thigh. Inhale, come up through the center. Exhale, side bend to the left. One more. Inhale, up through the center. Exhale, side bend to the left. Inhale through the center, reach your arms up towards the sky. To the back of the mat, when will hands come up onto the left toes? Send your right leg up and back, three-legged dog, breathe in. Knee to nose, round the spine, breathe out. Right leg up, three-legged dog, inhale. To your right tricep, high and wide to the side, hold. Right leg up, three-legged dog, breathe in. Now twist and tap your left elbow underneath you, find that twist. Good, right leg up, three-legged dog, inhale. Step forward to a low lunge, exhale. High crescent lunge, big breath in, stand up tall, look up at your hand. Take a back bend, cactus elbows down, lift your heart up towards the ceiling. Inhale to your high crescent lunge. Warrior two, exhale, open up, you're bending into your right leg. And we float, reverse your triangle on your inhale, straighten your right leg, lean backwards. Extended side angle, forearm to thigh, left arm alongside your ear, hold here. Roll your chest up towards the ceiling. Roll the pinky finger of your left hand in towards your face. Good. Reverse your warrior on your inhale. And extend it side angle just a moment as you exhale. Five pointed star. Inhale. Heels in, toes out. Horse pose. Exhale. Bend your knee. Five pointed star. Breathe in. Horse sink a little bit lower on your breath out. Five pointed star. Inhale. Horse, bend the knees, exhale. Five-pointed star, inhale. To the front of your mat, warrior two, take a longer stance between your legs. Reverse your warrior on your inhale. Low lunge, fingertips to the top of your mat, exhale. Standing splits, right leg up, breathe in. Shiva squat, look forward on your breath out. Standing splits, inhale, right leg up. Shiva squat, exhale. Standing split, straighten your legs, do it properly, breathe in. Good, Shiva squat, gaze forward on your breath up. Standing split, relax your neck, inhale. Forward fold, two feet meet, exhale. Halfway lift your chest, breathe in. Hold all of your legs on your breath up. High mountain, inhale to stand up really tall. Hands to create your heart into your lungs. Chair poles, Utkatasana, inhale, two arms up. Eagle left arm underneath the right, wrap the arms up nice and tight, and then it's left leg up and over for your eagle balance, find your Garudasana on the other side. Good. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Yep, it's left leg up and over, they don't get confused. Good. Draw the belly in, let the belly support the lower back. Breathe. Calm breaths in and out of your nose. Don't forget to keep your balance steady with your eyes. Good. All right, hold for three, for two, beautiful guys, for one, high mountain, big breath in, feel that expansion after all that contraction, arms up, forward fold, exhale, hinge, bow down to the floor. Take a halfway lift as you inhale, gaze forward, high plank, plant your palms, step your feet back, hold there, draw the belly in. Okay, we're going to lower slowly, don't move yet, shift your body weight forward, take a big breath in. For the count of five, we go. Use your knees if you need to. Five, four. We're going all the way down. Three, two, and one. Very nice. All the way to the floor. Lie down on your tummy. Untuck your toes. Take your hands behind you. Interlace the hands at the lower back for locust. That's uncomfortable for you. Just reach the arms behind you. Now lift your arms up away from your spine. Lift your chest off the floor. You can stay there, or if you want more, lift your feet off the floor as well. So this is a strong pose. Make sure you're breathing. Point your toes. Tuck the chin slightly. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Good. And then lower your hands to the floor. Tuck your toes. Hands underneath the shoulders. You can choose high plank or tabletop. Push up on your inhale. 
and downward facing dog. Exhale, sitting bones up towards the sky. Spread your fingers wide apart, active hands, active legs. Good, catch your breath here, guys. All right, so let's find more of a flow. We'll add things on, change things up, keep your eyes and ears open, but try and keep that idea of one breath, one movement. Here we go, right leg up, three-legged dog, breathe in. Knee to nose, round your spine, breathe out. Three-legged dog, inhale, send the right leg up and back. To your right tricep, it's a little tap as you exhale. Uh, can you change out your legs? It's your right leg that should be up. Right leg up, three-legged dog, breathe in. Twist underneath you, tap your left elbow. Now take fallen triangle. So kick the leg out. I'll show you from the front. Lift the left arm up. So you're balancing on your right hand. Right leg is straight. Left foot is flat parallel to the back of your mat. Push into the back of your right hand. Lift the hips up nice and high. Good. Stay for a calm inhale. Lower the left hand down to the floor. Exhale. Right leg up, three legged dog. Inhale. Low lunge, step forward as you exhale. High crescent lunge, stay strong on your legs, breathe in. To the right into a vertical twist, breathe out. High crescent lunge, breathe in. Aeroplane, exhale to glide forward, left leg up behind you. Single leg to dasana, inhale, stand up tall, knee to chest. Pick up four, stretch, left ankle to right thigh, stay facing the front of your mat, I'm just going to show you. Stick your bum out, hands to create your heart. So your figure four stretch is a little contracted shape. Left ankle to right thigh. Sit down nice and low. Fold over your left shin. Good. Rise to a single leg to dasana as you inhale. Step back to your arrow lunge. Body weight forward. Arms back. Exhale. High crescent lunge. Inhale. Two arms lift. To the left at your vertical twist. Exhale. Drop the back knee down to the floor. Inhale. Toes out behind you. Come into your kneeling seat as you kneeling pose as you exhale. Inhale, two arms up alongside your ears. To the back of your mat, when will the hands come up onto the right toes? Left leg up, three-legged dog. Check it your left leg, breathe in. Knee to nose, round the spine, breathe out. You've got it, three-legged dog. Inhale, left leg up and back. Step forward to a low lunge, exhale. Rise to high crescent lunge, big breath in. Stand strong on your legs. Warrior two, exhale, open up. And bending into the left knee. Good. Reverse your triangle on your inhale. Straighten the left leg as you lean backwards. Good. And then find full triangle. It's easy to trick a nasana on your exhale. Left hand to shin. Right arm straight up above your right shoulder. Beautiful, guys. Stay strong in both of your legs. Power down through both of your feet. Good. Just breathe here. Calm breathe. Breaths in and out of your nose. Good. All right, then slowly rise to a star as you inhale, heels and toes out. We take one times horse as you exhale, bend your knees. Five pointed star, inhale. To the front of your mat, warrior two, exhale. Reverse your warrior on your inhale. Low lunge, hands to the floor, exhale. Standing splits, inhale, left leg up. Shiva squat, exhale, gaze forward. Standing splits, inhale, left leg up, listen carefully. Do a low lunge, exhale, step back. On your left hand, take side plank, Vashistasana, right leg on top of the left, right arm up. Draw the belly in. Good. Squeeze your glutes. Push the mat away with your left hand. Good. Good. And then it's a high plank as you inhale, right hand to the floor, listen. Half pigeon, right foot. Foot behind your left wrist, lower your right shin down to the floor. Okay, so tuck the back toes. This is important. And walk your hips back. So walk that back leg back. You can't sink if your hips aren't forward. Tuck the back toes, use that leg to walk your hips back. And then when you're ready, you can fold over your right shin. If this is uncomfortable for anybody, please do this lying on your back, okay? You don't want any pain in your right knee or your right ankle. So into your hot pigeon, you can melt over your right thigh, your right shin rather. <clears throat> Just allow the left hip to become heavier, so roll the left hip down to the mat here. And use your exhalations to find a bit more of a release into that right hamstring, that right hip and that right glute. 
Breathe here as you soften the face and relax the shoulders. Nice half pigeons, guys. Very nice. Okay, now listen carefully. Lift your gaze and plant your forearms to the floor. We're gonna come into a forearm plank. Tuck the back toes. Lift the hips, step your right foot back to a forearm plank and we're gonna hold here. Dome to the upper back. If you wanna take some weight off your shoulders, you can interlace your fingers, okay? Otherwise, hold your forearm plank. Keep your hips in line with your shoulders. Draw the belly in. Hold for three, for two, for one. Lower the hips and pelvis down and come into Sphinx Pose. Separate your hands, spread your fingers nice and wide, and tuck your toes. Pull the heels of the hands back so you pull your chest forward. Shut your shoulder blades down your back. So it's a little bit of an opener for the upper back body. Good. Draw the belly in to support your lower back. Nice, guys. And then lower down, hands underneath your shoulders, tuck your toes. High plank or tabletop, inhale to push up. And find down and facing dog, exhale, sitting bones up towards the ceiling. Breathe there. Very nice. Good, catch your breath, big breaths in and out of the nose. All right, left leg up, three-legged dog. Check it's your left leg, breathe in. Need to nose, round the spine, lots of space underneath you, breathe out. Good, three-legged dog, inhale, left leg up and back. To your left tricep, high and wide, tap and hold. You've got it. Left leg up, three-legged dog, breathe in. Twist underneath you to your right elbow and then kick out for fallen triangle. So kick the left leg out. Plant the right foot flat, parallel to the back of your mat. Yes, so your left leg extends to the right-hand corner of your mat. Yep, you've got it. Breathe there, hold there. Good. And then unwind back to three-legged dog. Inhale your left leg up and back, three-legged dog. Step to a low lunge, land lightly between your hands. High crescent lunge, inhale, stand up, lift your arms. To the left, it's your vertical twist, left arm back, right arm forward. Good, high crescent lunge, inhale, gaze forward. Find your balance, guys. Aeroplane, exhale to glide forward, reach the fingertips behind. Just here for a moment. Single leg to Dustin. As you inhale, stand up, pull your knee to your chest. And then it's figure four stretch. Right ankle on top of left thigh. Sit nice and low. Yep, you've got it. Take your bum out like you're trying to sit in an invisible chair behind you. <clears throat> Single leg to Dustin. As you inhale, knee to chest. Arrow lunge. Exhale to step back, reach the arms behind you. Inhale to your high crescent lunge. To the right, it's your vertical twist. Exhale. Drop the back knee down to the floor, right toes behind you, inhale. Hands to pray at your heart, so you're in that kneeling gait pose, exhale. Arms up alongside your ears, breathe in. To the back of your mat, windmill hands come up onto the left toes. Send your right leg up and back, three-legged dog. Check it's your right leg, breathe in. Yes, knee to nose, round your spine, breathe out. Three-legged dog, inhale, send the right leg up and back. Step forward to a low lunge. Exhale, step between your hands. High crescent lunge. Inhale, stand up nice and tall. Warrior two. Exhale to open it up. Hold nice and strong. Good. Reverse your warrior triangle. I beg your pardon. Reverse your triangle on your inhale. Straighten that front leg. And then find full triangle as you exhale. Or teacher trick and lesson. Right hand to right chin. Left arm straight up above your shoulder. Good. Breathe in. Nice, power down through both of the feet. Try and extend the crown of your head over your front toes. So find lots of length through both sides of your waist. Good, it's five-pointed star. Inhale to rise up through the center. Hands to break your heart, come into your horse pose and we're gonna hold this one. Bend your knees, keep your knees over your toes. Hands to pray, relax your shoulders. Just a little bit of work for the legs. Hold for three, two, and one, into your star, take a big breath in. To the front of your mat, warrior two, breathe out. Reverse your warrior on your inhale. Low lunge, fingertips to the front of your mat, exhale. Standing splits, right leg up, breathe in. 
Shiva squat, breathe out. Standing splits, inhale, right leg up to a low lunge, land lightly. On your right hand, side plank to the left. Left arm up. Push the mat away with your right hand. If you need to modify, you can lower your right shin to the floor. You want to arch through the side body as you lift the hips up nice and high. Good. Inhale to a high plank. Half pigeon, left foot behind the right wrist, lower the shin down to the floor. Tuck the back toes, walk the hips back. And when you're ready, you fold over your shin on the other side now. Allow your right hip to roll heavier down on the side. Allow a bit of a softening to the face as you fold over that front shin. Allow, relax the shoulders and breathe. Good. Okay. Lift your gaze, forearms to the floor. We're going to move through forearm plank into dolphin, guys. So if you need weight off your shoulders, interlace the hands. Tuck the back toes, step back to a forearm plank. And now walk your feet in towards your face. And just like we did when we were in on our hands and our knees, push into your forearms, lift your shoulders away from the floor. Little bend of the knees is fine. You want to have length through the spine, length through the tailbone. So walk your feet in as close as you can and bend the knees a little bit rather than keeping your legs straight. Yep. It's so strong, guys. Relax the neck. You're looking at your toes. Actively push down into your forearms so that you lift your head and your shoulders away from the floor. Beautiful. Breathe there. Nice. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Lower your knees to the floor and come into your tabletop. Hands underneath the shoulders. And let's rinse this out with a few rounds of cat and cow, which should feel really nice. So inhale to your cow, belly down, heart forward. Exhale to your cat, round to the spine, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone. Inhale to your cow, spread your collarbones. Exhale to your cat, round to the upper back. One more, inhale to your cow pose. Tuck your toes, down the facing dog. Exhale, sitting bones up towards the sky. Take your hands and your feet a little bit further away from you. Breathe here. This is your last down the facing dog of practice this morning. Press weight into your hands. Press weight into your feet. Good. And then as you inhale, lift your heels, bend your knees, gaze forward. Malasana squat. You can step or hop or float your feet outside your hands. Drop your bum down. Press elbows into knees. Press knees back into elbows. We're going to take a little twist in our Malasana squat today. A little bit different. So I'm going to show you from the front. You can just watch but move with me. Shift your weight into your right leg. And then lower the left knee down to the floor. A little bit of internal rotation into that hip. Take your right fingertips. Tap into the floor just behind your right hip. As you inhale, lift the left arm up. As you exhale, twist and hook the elbow outside the knee. As you twist, tuck your tailbone. Don't arch your back. And look over at your right shoulder. Try not to drop your left hip too close to the mat, otherwise that internal rotation might feel a little bit spicy. It's a nice twist. It should feel really good, guys. So twist and look over your right shoulder. Good. And then slowly face forward, and then reverse that back into your molasses squat. Bring your hands to create your heart. Good. Okay, to the other side. Shift your weight into your left foot. Take the slow. Drop your right knee literally down to the floor. Left fingertips tend behind you. As you inhale, lift the right arm up. As you exhale, twist off the elbow outside the knee. Tuck your tailbone, don't arch your back. You want to be able to twist through the spine here. Good. And then gaze forward and come back into your molasses squat. squats. So you're at the top edge of your mat. Good. And then take a seat, sit down on your bottom. Separate your feet out in front of you, hip width distance apart. As you inhale, reach the arms forward, connect the palms of your hands, tuck your chin to your chest. Exhale to slowly roll all the way down onto your spine. So really slow here, a little bit of core work for you as you massage one vertebra at a time all the way down to the floor. So let's sit up for a round of bridge. Pull the heels in towards your bottom, arms alongside you, palms face up. Tuck your tailbone and then lift your hips up. 
Once your hips are up, move your shoulders closer down towards your heels. So get the shape a little bit smaller. You can take your hands over your head, fingernails touch the floor, or you can interlace your hands underneath you and press the outside of your fingers into the mat. So just choose something to do with your arms that feels good for you. Good. Nice, guys. Squeeze in your inner thighs together slightly like you're squeezing an invisible ball between your legs. Stay active in the hamstrings. Stay active in the back bodies. We just switch on those muscles one last time. Good. All right, and then slowly when you are ready, get your arms alongside your hips and roll down through the upper back, through the middle back, through the lower back. Then gather your knees into your chest. Just give yourself a little hug as you hold your shins. And then float your arms and your legs up towards the sky. Viparita Karani, legs up the wall. So head and shoulders are on the floor. Arms and legs are up towards the ceiling. Yep, arms and legs up. Arms up. Arms up, fingertips, yes, towards the ceiling. You've got it. Relax your shoulders. Head and shoulders on the floor. Now circle out into the wrists and the ankles. So do small circles, moving the joints one direction, then the other direction. It's a nice opportunity to close your eyes. And just feel a sense of lightness in the fingers and the toes as the arms and the legs suspend up in space. Good. And let's take a happy baby. So open your knees, hold the inside or outside blades of your feet, and then resist the urge to lift your tailbone up. Press your tailbone down. So if you can't do that, then hold your shins or your calf muscles. Good. Get your shins perpendicular to the mat. If it feels good, you can gently rock from side to side or just stay still in the center. It's up to you. Nice, guys. All right, then arms and legs up towards the sky. Viparita Karani, float everything up again. Take a huge breath in. Exhale to gather your knees into your chest. Give yourself a big, beautiful hug. Wrap across your shins. You can curl yourself up into a little ball. You can lift your head and shoulders off the floor. You can squeeze your nose between your knees if you like, or just keep your head and shoulders on the mat. Good. Start to set your intention for your Shavasana. So relax your shoulders, soften your face. Then take a big breath in and balloon your belly up towards your thighs. And exhale into your Shavasana. Slowly land everything to the floor. Stretch out through the arms, lengthen out through the legs and get really, really comfortable. If you need to pop a jersey on or something, guys, I'll give you about three or four minutes in your Shavasana. So just allow yourself this time to get comfortable, but keep yourself warm. Don't get cold, please. In your Shavasana, close your eyes and literally allow your whole body to melt. So become really, really heavy to the floor. Good guys, nicely done. Give yourself a few moments here as long as you feel that you need. And it's about three minutes to one o'clock. So at one o'clock on the dot, I'd just like to get us back onto our seats so that we can just finish off. So just spend a little bit of time in your Shavasana and then when you're ready, I want to give you a couple of moments just to, when you're ready, make yourself Take yourself back into a seat, but don't rush, guys. You've got a good three minutes.
Okay, guys, you have another minute. Don't rush. Okay, I'm going to unmute all of you. Sorry, because I've muted all of you. Let me just get back onto here and unmute all of you. Okay. Okay, any comments, any feedback? Did you absolutely hate that? Did you like it? Was it too fast? Was it too slow? Was it good? Was it bad? Anything. Go, anybody. <laughs> Daisy, yes. No, I really enjoyed that, Bev. Thank you. Good, my pleasure. I enjoyed the, you know, I enjoyed the the flow, the one breath, one movement, and the like the transitions, like the low lunge into the wide pyramid. That, that was quite okay, nice, good. and the forward bar was very so nice. You would, so you did, you did find that that idea of that that flow, that idea of one breath, one movement. Mm. Okay, cool, good. All right. Anybody else? Any feedback? Any comments? I can't see if you've got a, there is a little thing on your screen that you can put a little hand up if you want to talk, if I can't see you. Otherwise, just go for it. Just <laughs> say anything. I thought it was too fast. for It was too fast for me. I felt like I was flaying a bit. Okay. Um, yes. I've been in, I, I like vinyasa, uh, but I, I, I think I prefer it a much slower much vinyasa slower. flow. Okay. Got it. Yes, absolutely. That is always an option. Yes. Okay. Anybody else want anything to say? Anything to add? Gary, yes, Gary. Thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Good. I, I, I've done these type of, types of classes before, but I don't do them that often. Yes. Nice, I enjoyed it. Okay, good, good. I'm glad. I want us to get the idea of of one breath, one movement as much as possible. There is a little bit of static poses, obviously. Makes it a little bit more challenging, but mostly it's that idea of one breath, one movement and a lot of transitions. Okay, horse and star, basically just transition poses. They're not really maybe working the legs a little bit, but it's more of a transition pose. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I want to just go back to my uh, PowerPoint and let's just finish off a little bit here. Uh, okay. Let's just open that. All right. I showed. Okay, so I wanted to take you all the way down to to where we are today. Okay, um, I'm sure Catherine has mentioned a guy called Jason Crandall. Mm -hmm. He's a well-renowned vinyasa yoga teacher. He encourages critical thinking and he likes sequencing to peak poses. I'm sure Catherine's mentioned him. If he hasn't, go and follow him on Instagram or wherever you're, whatever social media you're on. He has these little sequences that he prints, that he puts on, on, on social media. And these are really helpful, guys. If you look at like the one on the left, which is quite clear, if I'm stuck for a sequence, well, I haven't used that one. I've used a side crow one. I wonder if I've got that one yet. No, I haven't. Um, I will look at the sequence and I will think, okay, I like the sequence because everything is set out for me I just have to find a way to flow between each of those poses. So I will sometimes, if I'm really stuck, I will look at a sequence just as a bit of a refresh or whatever, and I'll go, okay, that's great. I like this. I like what he's doing. Every, all the poses are set out in the correct uh, manner. So it starts off with the, with the easiest poses and goes to the more complicated poses. All I then have to do is find a way to flow between these poses. So it's a really nice way to just, if you're really stuck for a sequence, is have a set of poses and then think about critically how you can literally flow from one pose to the other. And that might give you your whole sequence without you having to plan it too hastily because basically here, everything is set out for you anyway. Okay. Another lady who's very, very interesting is Jenny Rawlins. If you don't follow her, go and follow her. She has little snippets of small little flows, short little flows that you can easily incorporate into your flow that you are teaching in a class. So she's quite amazing. She's um, very interesting, very switched on. She does a lot of functional work as well, functional movements and, and, and um, functional range conditioning, mobility and all that kind of thing. But her posts are really helpful. If you're just stuck and you need a little bit of motivation, then check in with her because she has little um, 
um, transition poses and little, little sort of mini flows that, that you can add into your classes. Okay. Just talking a little bit about transitions, you would have noticed um, some transitions. We didn't do this one, but Skandasana is a transition to move from one side of the mat to the other. Um, curtsy squat, we didn't do, but that's also a little transition. You can change your legs. You can do curtsy, you can do chair, step the right foot back to a curtsy squat and then back to chair pose and step the left foot back and then you're on the other side. So you can swap out your legs. Prasarita wide-legged forward fold. You can also change direction on your mat because then you can do a halfway lift and you can do a low lunge either towards the front or the back of your mat. So this is just an example of transitions that you can use. Five-pointed star we did today. Okay, five-pointed star to horse is a nice little flowy type of movement. Um, it's nice for people to just breathe. So it's not too difficult. Beginners find it easy to do, but it's, it's fun and they can do it. And it feels flowy and it feels like you're moving with your breath. So it's quite commonly, it's quite commonly um, used. Oh, Roxanne, let me just um, go and let you back in again. Okay. All right, uh, let's just check here. Okay, so five-pointed star is another little transition pose for you guys. Horse also. It's quite a commonly taught little pose. You can add some arm variations. You can do eagle arms. You can get them to hold that squat to work into the leg so you can make it a little bit more challenging. Reverse warrior we did today. Reverse warrior to extended side angle is very common. Very common transition. Reverse triangle we did today. Reverse triangle to triangle is a very common transition. Or you can go reverse triangle to half moon. Figure four stretch. You can take an arm balance. You can take a cross-legged forward fold and swap out your legs. I know I'm going through this really fast, guys, but we don't have a lot of time. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say. Right. Ah, oh, here's some transitions for you guys. Malasana to crow often taught in vinyasa classes, often taught in power classes. Twisted chair to side crow. Okay, so from twisted chair, you would get into your arm balance, your side crow. Twisted lunge to side crow. Obviously not from the floor, but you would go from, not from, from the one that's right on the floor, but you would go for your twisted lunge to stepping your feet together to your twisted chair into your side crow. Chair to boat pose is very common. Start in chair pose, sit down on your bottom and come into Navasana. Another little transition that's commonly used. Extended side angle to birds of paradise, you must have seen it's often taught in classes. Triangle to half moon. We didn't do half moon today, but that's, off, that's a very common transition as well. Forearm plank to dolphin, we did that today. Standing splits to handstand. We did standing splits, but we didn't do handstand. So <clears throat> just think about the shapes and you want your shapes to be similar to whatever you're working into. So from standing splits, it's quite nice to go into handstand. All right, I'm going to discuss a little bit about music, but I'm going to stop the sharing here so we can just see what's going on. So, so I sometimes find that actually putting together a uh, music playlist is much more difficult than actually sequencing a yoga class. Music is difficult, guys. It's really tricky to find nice music for yoga. I use Spotify. You can use your Apple Music as well. You have to, it's a good idea to try and synchronize your flows with your music. So in other words, you start off with really slow movements and slow music. As you move towards the middle, maybe your music gets a little bit faster, your movements get a little bit faster. And then obviously, as you slow down towards the end, you want to slow down your music. And in Shavasana, you either have no music or you have music but with no lyrics because the lyrics can be quite distracting okay and people find it very difficult yeah. to relax in shavasana especially beginners people find it difficult to switch off so if they have lyrics that they're now concentrating on sometimes it's more difficult for them to switch off so try and find music that doesn't have lyrics for your shavasana very tricky to manage all of those things when you're teaching a yoga class, but honestly, the music is one of the most difficult things. I also, I don't have a problem sharing my music. You can go and find my, my playlist on Spotify. You can borrow them, use them. I really don't mind. Some teachers, uh, yes, I can do that. I can do that, Zenat. Yes, I can do that. Um, 
I don't mind sharing my music. You'll find that some teachers are quite um, possessive over their music. I'm not like that at all. I think I believe in abundance for everybody. And I don't mind if you go and look at my Spotify playlists. If you want to use them, use them. I don't have a problem with it at all. Not everybody is like that, though. I mean, I have had teachers that just won't even share one song with you. <laughs> so that's just something that you're going to have to get used to. But try and find music that suits your flow and try and find music that starts off slowly, works up to sort of a peak and then slows down for your Shavasana. Okay. Um, I don't think if there's anything else I wanted to tell you. Okay, does anybody have any questions they want to ask me about? teaching vinyasa, teaching anything. Are any of you go? are you interested in teaching vinyasa? Are any of you interested in, in actually going ahead and teaching vinyasa classes? Yeah. Okay. All right. So another good, another good thing to think about is how do you plan your classes? So it might be quite nice to, what I like to do is to have an idea in my head of what type of class I'd like to teach. Maybe I'm teaching to a peak pose, maybe not. Maybe it's just a transition. Maybe I've got a different transition that I want to work into. And then I will sequence the whole class just maybe around that single transition. I like to write things down. But what I do is I get on my mat and I move and breathe and try and put it together on my own first. And then I often end up writing down the sequence afterwards. Okay. You'll have to fill it out for yourself. Maybe you have little flashcards or something that you can put together in a sequence. Um, it's quite difficult in the beginning to sequence. The good advice is to always start off with your sun A's and your sun B's. Really simple in the beginning, start off with sun A's and sun B's. And then from there, you can work into some balanced postures like aeroplane or figure four stretch. Warrior flows are always very easy to bring in. Your reverse warrior, your extended side angle, horse star. And then you come down to the floor, maybe a half pigeon or some prone back bends on your belly. And then back and then onto the floor, maybe you want to end off with a little bit of a back bending sequence. And then your closing sequence is obviously where you start to pull things down. Okay, but I'm sure Catherine will talk you through the sequencing. She will in in in, in a much um, greater detail than what I'm able to do because she likes you to teach to a peak post peak pose, which is can be a little bit more complicated. Okay. But the most important thing that I want to tell you guys is when you start teaching is to have fun. You are going to make mistakes. You are possibly going to forget and mix up your left and your right. We've all done it. None of us are perfect. That's okay. Try and just pick up where you left off. Go back to a place that you can remember if you get stuck. And maybe even make a little bit of a joke about it. Try not to get too stressed about it. We all make mistakes. Okay, I've literally stood in a class where I've been stuck in high crescent lunge and I had regulars and I looked to the guy on the right and I said to him, Robert, where did I go from here? And he laughed and he said, I don't know. And I looked to the left and I said, Muhammad, what did I do next? And he said, I don't remember. <laughs> and we all had a little bit of a giggle. And then thank goodness my brain switched on and I remembered and we were able to move on. So try not to get yourself in a state. We all make mistakes. None of us are perfect. Try and maybe make a little bit of a joke. Try and get to a place that you can maybe one step back from where you were that you can remember where you were so you don't get too lost and then move on from there. But guys, have fun. And please also remember that you are going to have people in your classes that don't like your classes. That's fine. Hopefully they won't come back. Okay. Because you are not everybody's flavor. You never will be. Don't expect to be. Best advice I can give you if you're going to go and teach, don't take anything personally. Okay. You're all amazing in your own right. And what you have to offer, the people who are open to it will come to your classes. The people who don't like your classes will stay away. And that's absolutely fine takes a bit of time to build up um, a following. So you just do what you need to do. You just be yourself. And that's also good advice as well. Be yourself, guys. If you don't believe in mudras, don't use them because it's going to come across as uncomfortable. Try and develop your own style of teaching. Try and develop your own dialogue. Try not to copy what you hear other teachers say because you think it sounds good. Let it be something that comes from your heart from your life experiences and from how you are feeling, and then you will be the best teacher out there that you can be. Okay, so just be yourselves. And if you, if you don't feel comfortable teaching something, don't. There's no pressure on you to, to do the same as everybody else. Try and find your own style, your own little niche or something about yourself that you can offer that's maybe a little bit different. Um, and life experiences do count. So if you have an experience that you wanna maybe talk about in class and try and bring it in, but just be yourselves. 
really. It's, it's all about that feeling of guiding people into a space that you are holding. And the best advice I can give you is just to be yourself. Okay. No airs and graces. Go and do what you need to do and really, really have fun. Enjoy it. If you're not having fun, then there's something wrong. Okay. Okay, guys. Any other questions? Anybody want to ask me anything? You can ask me absolutely anything. About I'll tell you a story about a lady who used to come to my classes. This is just an idea for you guys of the kind of stuff that you might have to deal with. She used to come to my classes and the heated classes and straight away she would walk in and she'd start moaning about the heat and standing underneath the, the heater and waving her arms around and behaving like an absolute uh, moron. <laughs> um, she hated my classes. She would then go into the change rooms afterwards and literally pull my class to pieces to everybody that was in the change room. It was a very, very horrible experience for me. She, even though she hated my classes, she kept coming. Okay. And when she walked in, I would feel sick because it would affect my whole energy. As you hold a space, you know, you, you are energy and it's very difficult to teach from a solid foundation when you are not feeling comfortable with your energy or somebody that's in the room that is upsetting your space. So she used to come to every single one of my classes and pull my classes to pieces afterwards and actually walk out sometimes and tell me how terrible it was. Why she kept coming back, I don't know. So after three years at one of the studios, I eventually said to her, please do not come back to my classes. I had to, I couldn't do it anymore. It was just awful. She disappeared for about a year. And guess what? She's back in my classes and she absolutely loves them. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just sharing an experience with you so that you know that it might not be all these rose tinted glass experiences that you have out there. You will get people that don't like your classes. You will get people that are negative. Please don't take it personally. If I had taken it personally, I would have stopped teaching yoga and I would have given it up altogether. Okay, so just know that there are people who aren't going to enjoy your classes. Hopefully they won't be like this lady and they, they don't enjoy your classes, they won't come back. Because you don't have to deal with that uncomfortable energy. Because we are all energetic spaces and you, it's difficult to teach when you know that somebody is, is making you uncomfortable in your space. Okay. Another little word of advice. I don't know if any of you noticed. There are two ways of cueing breath. This is important. Listen carefully. Listen to the way I'm going to teach it. I'm going to teach you very simple, two ways. And I'm going to cue the breath differently both times. Listen, and I'm going to ask you if you can tell the difference. And then I want you to think about how this might help you when you start teaching. Okay, listen to that. Inhale, reach your arms up to a high mountain. Exhale to a forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale to fold forward. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, hands to pray to your heart. Okay, listen. High mountain, inhale, reach your arms up. Forward fold, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. High mountain, inhale. Hands to pray to your heart, exhale. Did you notice the difference? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the one... You cue the breath first. The mm -hmm. second one, you cue the movement first and the breath second. When I first started teaching, most yoga teachers, you will hear, cue the breath first. So they will go inhale high mountain, exhale forward fold. Okay. I alternate between the two, but my favorite way of cueing is to cue the movement first. Because when I say high mountain, you're automatically going to inhale but at least you know where you are going. I find that sometimes when people say, inhale high mountain, I'm inhaling, but I don't know where I'm going. So I find it a little bit um, dysregulated. This is my personal thing. I'm giving it to you as advice. You can test it out. Don't be afraid to try both ways and see what works better for you. I find it easier to maintain the flow if I cue the movement first. So inhale to high mountain, uh, forward fold, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. To me, the breath is going to come naturally. So I like to cue the movement first so that people know where they are going and the breath automatically follows. It's a personal thing. Feel it out. Test it out. Go and listen when you are in classes to how the teachers cue 
Notice how that feels for you. Does it feel comfortable? Does it make it dysregulated for you? Are you not sure where you're going? Do you get a little bit stuck? And then test it out for yourself. My teaching transformed for me when I changed the way I cued the breath. So I cued the movement first and the breath second. That for me just feels more comfortable, more, more natural, and I was able to get into more of a flow with my teaching. Okay, feel it out, test it out. It's just a little bit of advice. You can go and explore and experiment, but don't forget, to, don't be afraid to change things up. Yes, Michelle. You were giving us a lot of teaching points when you were teaching, which I appreciate. Yes. Um, I want to know if that was, if that, is that how you teach a standard class or was, are you giving us more teaching points because you're teaching in this that is how that, that is how I would teach a standard class. That is exactly how I would teach in a studio. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. With, with the physical adjustments as well, but a lot of verbal cues, because if you have got a big class of 40 people, it's impossible to physically correct every single one of them. So your mm -hmm. verbal cues, that's a good point, actually, your verbal cues become very important. So you have to make sure that when you're teaching, you watch in your class and you need to see if somebody's doing wrong, something doing wrong, somebody's doing something wrong, give a verbal cue because that might not only help that one person that you've seen, but it might help everybody else in the room. Like, a high, like in your high plank, lift the back of your head up instead of hanging in your shoulders. Just that one verbal cue can change that high plank pose for everybody. And I haven't had to adjust them at all physically. Mm -hmm. So that is how I teach that. How, that is exactly how I would teach as I taught you this morning is how I teach my classes at the studios. So you're almost speaking all the time. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes. Perfect. When, when, Perfect. We get, when we get into more of a flow and people know where they are going, I will say three legged dog, inhale, knee to nose, exhale. And those are the only cues I will give when we get into the flow. So say right. we've done the sequence once or twice, the third time it's less teaching. It's more just cueing mm. the breath and the movement because you know, because Everybody sort of has an idea of where they're going. They know what they should be doing. Like need to know, you know you need to tuck your chin in. So I more than likely in, in towards the end, just start to cue the breath and the movement and leave out the, the more, more um, intricate teaching detail. Because by then they've heard it, they know what they should be doing, and then it's yeah. over to them. And I want right. them to just find that, 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 that kind of breath and movement thing without having too many teaching details show, thrown in. But obviously, if you're bringing in new poses in the last flow, you need to bring in a little bit more teaching detail. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Anybody you else? You, is that, do you do any online classes? Yes, I do. I do Zoom classes, yes, privately at home. Yes. Yes. I'll send you my Instagram, um, if you like, and you guys can go and have a look. Um, Daisy, you want to ask me something? Yes. I do. I'd like to find out, I'm just thinking like when you go out and teach and you have like a wide variety of students like beginners or older people or like people that are advanced, how do you manage that in your class? It's a lot of, you have to give a lot of um, modifications for beginners. It's really hard for me to do it on Zoom because I can't see all of you at the same time. In a class it's easier because I've got, I can see everybody more or less at the same time. So my, if I've got beginners, I will just pay a little bit more attention to them. I will either give more verbal cues or if I know their names, I might, I might specifically say, um, Camilla, uh, drop your knees to the floor instead of knees off the floor or something like that. I will maybe personally give them some info. Very difficult beginners often thrown into vinyasa classes, just have to do what they can. And you'd be amazed, you know, you think people are, will find it difficult, but it's amazing what people can do if they just listen and watch. They might not get it the first time around, but the second time they will get it. It's absolutely amazing what people, are. it's brilliant. I mean, yoga is, yoga is tricky, but it's not impossible. So when you have mm -hmm. advanced students and you have beginners, I give a lot of modifications for beginners, like your side plank, lower the shin down to the floor, um, in your high plank, drop your knees down to the floor, all that kind of thing. It is tricky because then you have to keep in mind that you need to give you need to give um, cues for advanced practitioners and beginners, and that's where you're where you're when you're doing a power class. Your uh, peak poses thrown in gets tricky because if we're in a malasana squat, that you say to the beginners or the people who aren't advanced guys, if you're not taking your crow pose, stay in your malasana. Advanced practitioners take your your arm balance. So you're always trying to give. Uh, um, an option to people who want to take it up to a higher level and an option for beginners who actually can't. 
So it is tricky. There's a lot to consider and you have to, you have to take that. It's in the beginning. It doesn't come naturally. I'll be completely honest. In the beginning, I was on my mat a lot, doing a lot more demonstrating than I was watching. But eventually when you get more comfortable, you off your mat and then it's really, really, that is the, that is the beauty of the teaching is that you are watching what's going on and you're giving verbal cues and helping and getting people into um, poses you know, with just maybe just verbal cues, whether they're beginners or advanced, which is, which is amazing. But it might take you a little, a little time before you get to that space. Okay. okay Anjal, good question. You need to add, you need to give lots of modifications for beginners and for at your advanced practitioners. Okay. Anybody else want to ask me anything? Last chance, pick my brain. <laughs> anything you like. Are you going to share the PowerPoint with us? I, I haven't done that before, but I'm sure I will. Um, I send it to Catherine. I do not know this. And I'll actually, has Catherine got my PowerPoint? I think she has got the PowerPoint. If she hasn't, I'll send it to her and then she can send it on to you. And I'll record the session, which I send to her and maybe she'll want to use that as well. I don't know. I don't know if she'll use it for you guys or if she'll use it for future, but yeah, I can do that with pleasure. Um, the PowerPoint, I've got a, a much more involved sort of PowerPoint that I will send to you, which has got a lot more information on it. And you can just have a scan through and read it in your, in your own time. It's more advanced than the one I showed you today. Okay. Thanks. All right, pleasure. Guys, you are so fortunate to be able to do your yoga teacher training with Catherine. Enjoy every single second. It is a fantastic experience. She will transform you and your practice. And I hope that you guys really, really enjoy yourselves. And I will see you next week, I think, where we go through Hot 26, which, which is quite different to Vinyasa. Okay, so and if you have any questions, my I'm um, on your 200 hour group on WhatsApp. If you want to private message me, I really don't mind. Anything you want to ask me, if you think, oh, I forgot, I just want to double check, I forgot to ask Bev this or whatever, please message me. I really don't mind. Okay, enjoy, guys. Have a beautiful, beautiful Sunday, and thank, thank you for giving you. Your time to share your space with me. Thanks. Thanks. Lots of love. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Pleasure. Bye. Bye.